To start off our series of how-tos, let's take a look at hand sewing. There are several types of needles and thread used in hand sewing, but because we are starting with the basics, the only thing to focus on are the ones labeled all-purpose. All-purpose thread is commonly used for everyday garments and is good for repair work. Your needle, sometimes labeled as a sharp, is suitable for fabrics commonly used in casual wear. Now let's take a look at how to get started. First, you will want to cut yourself a length of thread to work with. The length of thread you choose will be based on the type of project you wish to work on. Just remember that if your thread is too long, it can cause unwanted tangling. Hold the needle firmly in one hand. With your other, slowly feed one end of the thread through the eye at the base of the needle. Pull enough thread through so that the thread doesn't slip free while you are sewing. To tie off your thread, take the end of your longest strand and wrap it gently around your needle a few times. Now slide the thread down the needle, through your thread, and once it reaches the end, a knot should form. Make sure that it is secure by tugging lightly on either side of the knot. Now you are ready to begin sewing. Once you have reached the end, you will want to secure your stitches. The easiest way to achieve this is with a back stitch. With your needle on the underside of your work, make a small stitch behind your last stitch, leaving a small loop. Take yet another small stitch, and this time pass the needle and thread through the loop you have just created. Now pull both of the stitches closed. Snip off any remainder of your thread and admire your work. To wrap up our video on hand sewing basics, let's take a look at three helpful stitches. Note that in this video, I will be using black thread on white fabric. In your own projects, you will want to use thread that matches the color of your fabric. The straight stitch, also called the running stitch, is the simplest form of hand sewing and is the base on which many other stitches are built. In order to create this stitch, you will start with a back stitch, then push your needle in and out of the fabric, creating small dashes along the way. If you are using this stitch to permanently attach two layers, then you will want to make very small stitches. End with a back stitch, and you are all set. The whip stitch is used in hem work and for attaching patches, fur, or lace to a garment. With the two edges in their desired location, 
push your needle through at an angle to your work. Drawing the thread smoothly through all of your layers, bring your needle back to the same side and repeat. This will cause a spiral shape along the edge of your work. Finally, let's take a look at a more advanced, yet still very useful stitch. The catch stitch. This is a great stitch for hemming skirts or pant legs because it allows the fabric to move freely and remain secure. Take a look at the hem on your garment. You will notice that the hem creates a second layer underneath the top. This is the layer that you will be working with the most. Once you have pinned your hem in place, push your needle through the hem layer only. The next step is a bit different in that you only want to pick up a few threads from the other side of the hem. Cross over the fold and take another small stitch from your hem layer. Keep alternating your stitches across your hemline until you have reached the end of your project. Your stitches should be close to the fold of your hem and form a small series of X's. Once again, you will want to complete your work with a back stitch. If you are interested in learning more about hand sewing, I would suggest that you look up Rebecca Cunningham's Basic Sewing for Costume Construction. It was the textbook that was used in my beginning sewing class and is great for learning and developing your sewing skills. But that's all from the Nerd Closet this time. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Facebook. I hope to see you on the next Nerd Closet How-To when we take a look at missing buttons.